you as the generation of women before Mashiach are so incredibly special. You are so unique. You are so special and you have such a huge influence on your family, your children, your husband. It's interesting to me. I saw at one point someone, a teenager, wearing a shirt with a motto and it said, Today I'm doing absolutely nothing. And the word absolutely and nothing were magnified with like a larger print and stood out. And to make it a goal to do absolutely nothing that day is pretty interesting. Yes, there's such a thing as recharging our batteries. There's such a thing as relaxing, downtime, me time, self-care. But to make it all day, every day, that is not a goal. That is a waste of time. That is a waste of life. And that is denying your unique status and position in this world as a woman before the generation of Mashiach. We are on the heels of the generation of the time of Mashiach. What does that mean? Why is it such a special time? You have to know your power. You have to know your special qualities, your gifts, and the strength Hashem gave you. The Arizal teaches that the women in the era prior to the coming of Mashiach will enjoy a unique status. This reward is linked to the pious response of the women who left Egypt and received the Torah in the desert. These women were encouraged to contribute their jewelry to the construction of the golden calf. But they refused, they refused to participate. They said, I'm not going to participate in this. I'm not going to give my jewelry to the construction of the golden calf. And the Kabbalists teach us that the souls of these women are reborn over and over again on this earth until they at last completed the amount of Torah and mitzvot in this world until they reached spiritual perfection. However, we must know that the souls of the final generation before Mashiach, the final generation is now, will be the very same souls of the generation of the women who left Egypt. In other words, we have the same strength, the same kind of influence, the same kind of power that the women had in the much earlier generations in the time of the women who left Egypt. And that's tremendous. That is huge. During this pandemic, during this difficult time, we have such a special power. All we need to do is tap into it and believe in it. Yes, there's such a thing as a diminishing of the generations. In other words, generations of the people now, their spiritual state is much weaker than the generations prior. However, we are told here by the Kabbalists, by the Arizal, that you as the women before Mashiach, your souls are the same souls as the women who left Egypt. Now that's such hope, that's such encouragement, that's so beautiful. Because when you know you have the special strength, when you know you have the special power, just a little bit of help from your side is a lot of help from Hashem. He's giving it to us. He's saying, here, all you have to do is want it. What this means is that the women of today have an increased capacity to bring Torah into their homes and encourage their husbands to learn. The only thing we have to do is want. Now, can every single man learn the same way? Is every single man supposed to be this huge tzaddik, this huge Torah scholar? No. They are meant to be the people they're meant to be. And the wife can influence him to be the best Torah scholar he can be. How? By creating the atmosphere in the home. By being loving, encouraging, and kind. And celebrating his strengths. Celebrating the times when he does bring Torah to the table. When he does go to learn. Celebrating in a way that makes him feel good. So you have to know your husband. Some husbands don't like to be... Um, um, that they don't like to be complimented in a way where it's like they feel like a little kid. But you can do it in your own subtle, wise way. Hashem gave you as the woman a special measure of, of an, another quality. 
it's called binayi tara. It's a it's a wisdom. You have an intrinsic wisdom of how your husband how how your husband likes things, what he wants, and how to influence him the best. So every woman's husband is different. So no woman's husband is supposed to be the same as somebody else's. So we want to know. We want to remember that we have tremendous influence over our families, especially at this time. And this is what we really want. If I was to ask you, as a mother and a wife, and you're raising your family, you're working so hard and doing it anyway, what do you want to what goal do you want to ultimately reach for your family? What's the goal? Is the goal making sure my kids finish top schools? Honestly, that's not the goal. After they after they finish these schools, what kind of people are they going to become? Is it the goal is to for them to have a six figure income or more? Is the goal for them to have amazing talents and share them? Is the goal for them to be this popular, amazing person in the community that everybody looks up to and honors? Is the goal for them extravagant homes when they grow up and they live in lavish neighborhoods? Is the goal for them to have a lot of children? Now that could be confusing because yes, as a grandparent, you do want them to have a lot of kids. But we want to make sure we give our kids what they need. We want to make sure that our grandkids grow up in the right environment with the parents, which are our children, who are giving them exactly what their soul needs. In the end, what do we want? We want them to be the best people they can be, the people that are ready to enter the world to come. We live in this world in preparation for the next world. That's really ultimately what it is. We don't live for this world. There's no such thing as a mitzvah that you do. And in this world, oh, you did these, these many good deeds, these many mitzvahs. Okay, here's a good steak. Here's delicious ice cream. Here's a nice vacation. That's not a reward. That's not a that's not a reward. These are just little things that come into our lives. They're just gifts. They're just good experiences. They're icing on the cake. Your reward for the mitzvahs that you do, there's no measure for it. There's no there's no way we can measure a reward for a good deed for a mitzvah. The reward is eternity. The reward is the world to come. And we want to prepare our children for the world to come. We want to be proud of their actions. We want to be proud of the fact that they're close to Hashem. That's ultimately why we we are a mother and a wife, to prepare our homes, to be the Shekhinah, may Hashem dwell in our homes. This is ultimately why we do what we do, not for any other reason. All of the other re reasons that I mentioned are all superficial. We sometimes forget, no, I don't want him to be the smartest. I don't want him to be the richest. I don't want him to be the most popular meaning my child. I really want him to be the best person he can be. I want to give his soul what he needs in this world. I want to give him everything that he needs to flourish, to be successful. Now, the success is not monetary. Success is not physical. Meaning, for each child, success is different. Whatever difficulties they have and challenges, they overcome them. That's success. From the first steps that they take, from the first time they can go bike riding or swimming that's success that's celebrating it now as they grow older we want to root for their success we want to make sure that we give them as parents what they need and where does it start it starts in the home if the home is a place that's calm if the home is a place that's happy if the home is a place that's respectful the children will be the best that they can be if the home is not god forbid calm happy respectful the children shut down the children become emotionally crippled they're afraid to do things they're afraid to say things they're afraid to be themselves around their parents and then god forbid they try they make other friends that are actually going to listen to them and they have other influences that are not good unfortunately that could happen so what we want to do is we want to create and establish this beautiful environment in the home no matter how difficult it is, and the times are difficult, but we have this tremendous gift, we have this extra strength from Hashem. He's promising us, I know it's hard for you. I know it's hard for you. I know I made the situation happen, but I know you can overcome it. I know you can be the best mother and wife you can. I know you can be a calm, happy mother 
even in challenging times, despite it's, it's being difficult right now, despite there's so many worries and there's so many uncertainties, I know you're going to create a calm atmosphere in the home because I want Torah, Hashem says. I want Torah. I want Torah to be followed. This is my world. This is Hashem's world. This is not our world. We didn't create this world. We are guests in this world in order to be the people we are meant to be. He created us. He believes in us. We take up space in this world. Let's make him happy. We are guests. How do we act when we're in someone's home? We're careful. We're careful to do things exactly what they want. We need to do what Hashem wants from us. He, he wants for us to succeed. He is rooting for our success. He's saying, here I'm putting you in this world. But the Torah way is the way you will be able to succeed. It's the truth. Because I created the Torah first and the world second. So the Torah needs to be followed. The, the blueprint of the world is according to the Torah. So, and the whole world can see it now. All you have to do is open your eyes. And the way we prepare our children and our husbands for the world is preparing our homes, is being that atmosphere, is just being um, a solid foundation in the home where you create love, respect, acceptance, flexibility, um, a beautiful, calm atmosphere. And in this way, of course, with Hashem's help, praying to Hashem, the kids will flourish, the husband will flourish. And you will be that true Eshet Chayo. The Arizal promises that if the women want Torah, they will be granted Torah. And at that is their real reward. We have a mini Beit HaMikdash in our home. And yes, it's hard to take care of the home. You're not a success if your home is taken care of. You're a success if you love taking care of your home. You, it's the way you do it. It's the manner. It's not a oof and a ach and a shopping and a cleaning and a this and a that. And again, you didn't take off your shoes. And again, it's a mess. And no, I know it's going to be a mess. I'm going to enjoy my kids. I'm going to enjoy my home. It's going to be okay. It's going to be done again. So every single time I take care of my home, even though it's the same thing that I'm doing, it's laundry that I'm doing, uh, that I'm washing and folding, the floor that I'm cleaning and, wash, uh, and washing, it's all another mitzvah that I'm carrying with eternity. And it all starts in the home. So that's what we ultimately want. When we leave this world, we want our children, we want our husband to have the best wife and mother that they, that they could have had. Because it is our job, ultimately, as women, to be the foundation of the home, to be the atmosphere of the home. We control the control panel we have the control panel how do we want it to go so we have this amazing gift we need to use it wisely and we see this amazing concept in what we should value by the parsha uh, from rabbi friend on the parsha devarim he mentions something beautiful children are a gift and we know that but how do people view children how does a parent view their child? What's the purpose of having kids? Yaakov and Esav made a division. Esav was, ta was to take this world, and Yaakov was to take the next world. But when Yaakov came back from Aram, Esav welcomed him. But he noticed Yaakov's many children. Who are these children, he asked. And Yaakov answered, These are the children that Hashem graciously gave your servant. These are the children. Our tzaddikim expand the dialogue between Yaakov and Esav, revealing the underlying argument. You know what Esav was saying? What are you doing with all these children? I thought we made a division, that I would take this world and that you would take the world to come. So why do you have so many children? What do children have to do with the world to come? And Yaakov replies by saying, Not so. Children are sparks of the divine. The opportunity to raise a child is an opportunity to develop a divine soul to the point where it can enter the world to come. It is a privilege of the highest spiritual worth. This is why I have children. Yaakov wants children for their own sake, just to have kids, just to prepare them for the world to come. But Esau views children as an asset. They are something. 
in this world. Children are an extra pair of hands. In our modern generation, we may not need children to help us. We have cleaning ladies, we clean ourselves. However, we have made our children a tremendous burden. Do our children view us as view us raising them as they're exhausting? They take up so much of our time and they're expensive. But what about companionship and loneliness? Modern man, what do we do? We buy a dog. We're just so happy to see us no matter what. We don't come to a home that's loud. We don't come to a home that's dirty. Uh, we don't come to a home where children are, uh, are loud and frustrating and demanding. I want this and I want that. We welcome ourselves to a home where the tail, tail of a dog is wagging and greeting us and perhaps fetching us newspaper and slippers. Is that what we're up to? Is that what we want? Why do we have children? This is the attitude of Aesop in modern times. Yaakov understood the purpose of children. Their purpose is not to be taught on how to enjoy this world. Sometimes we mistake ourselves. We teach our kids to want everything and to have everything. And if you don't have anything, oh my goodness, I feel like a bad parent. I'm going to buy it for you. What do you want? This? You want that? New sneakers? A book bag? Yes. We should shower our kids with goodness. But not to believe in our, in our minds that they're supposed to live a life of pure enjoyment, of pure comfort. That's not the, the purpose to have kids and to feel like a good parent afterwards. Oh, I'm a good mother. I'm a good husband. Uh, I'm a good uh, parent. I'm a good mother and wife. Look, I'm giving my kids what they need. That's not the purpose Yaakov is teaching us. The purpose of children is not to make our lives easier, to be good helpers. Children help us for themselves. We teach them responsibility. Rabbi Benjamin Yohanan teaches that children should be helpful for their own sake, not for us. They need to learn the skills. And if they don't help, we just do it ourselves. And teaching them a lesson that it's not because we need them. We are teaching them respect responsibility, respect of authority, and being purposeful. Each child represents a spiritual mission, a spark of the divine entrusted in our care and guidance, an opportunity to fulfill Hashem's desire, to have His soul brought to the world to come. That is the purpose of having children. The children are not just a pair of hands. The children who are, uh, something I heard someone say, oh, you know, this child is so easy and, you know, they're, they're raised so right and the other one is so difficult. They're not good kids. There's no such thing as good and bad children. There's children who are easier and there's children who are more challenging, but they're all good because in the end, you grow as a parent and they become closer to the person they're meant to be with our help, Ezrat Hashem. So I, I give us all a blessing, a bracha, may Hashem help us be the wives and the mothers who are going to bring the final redemption with tremendous strength, tremendous wisdom, love, kindness, and care. We are appreciating the insights of The Queen Within You, the book by Rabbi Yaakov Hillel and Rabbi Fran on the Parsha. Leah Abramov, Being and Becoming. Awakening awareness of your greatness and potential.